It was my sophomore year of college at NYU, and I was ready for an adventure. I had my brother's backpack on, and he's six foot three, so as you can imagine, it was a little too big for me, and I'm looking down like this. I'm at the airport next to my best friend, Amelia, and we're daydreaming about scones in England, seeing the Eiffel Tower, and meeting all the hot Italian men. There was just one problem. My boyfriend didn't want me to go. You see, I had made the mistake that everybody tells you not to make when you go to college. I had continued to date my high school boyfriend. And there was another complication too. He was a year younger than me, so he didn't really get the whole college thing and was a naturally jealous person. So during my first year of college, I would ask him, hey, is it okay if I go to this party? No. Would it be cool if I went out dancing? No. Are you comfortable if I get lunch with a male friend from class? No. As you can imagine, I didn't have a lot of friends my freshman year. Um, but as time went on, I, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go to that party. I'm gonna try these things. And we would fight and we would fight more, but we didn't break up. I love this guy. And then the time came that I asked him, hey, I really want to go abroad for a semester in Prague. What do you think? No. But I did it anyway. <laughs> so I went to Prague, and during my very first week, I walk into this mandatory Czech class that all the NYU students in Prague have to take. And I see this guy, and I'm like, he's pretty cute. I'll sit next to him. So I sit next to him, and during Czech class, which I am struggling through because Czech has a lot of consonants, for those of you who don't know, not a lot of vowels. I look over and he's playing tic-tac-toe with himself. <laughs> he later told me this is because he wanted to figure out the optimal strategy to win. I understand that for chess. This was tic-tac-toe. Needless to say, I drew up my own little tic-tac-toe board and I slid it over to him for a challenge. Tic-tac-toe with two people. <laughs> we spent the rest of the class playing tic-tac-toe and hangman and I didn't learn much check at all, but I kicked his butt. And looking back, that should have told me everything I needed to know about this guy. He was smart, competitive, absolutely ridiculous, and knew how to make me laugh. So over the course of the semester, we got really close, and I met all of my best friends from NYU in Prague. I also went on a really big personal growth journey while I was in Europe. I went to 25 countries in five months. I went studying for my final on a topless beach in Greece. I stayed out until 4.30 in the morning in clubs in Germany. I went to the Eiffel Tower. I visited my homeland of Italy and Ireland. And I didn't ask anybody's permission. When I came back, I should have been really happy to see my boyfriend after five months apart. But something was different, and I couldn't figure out what it was. Now, this guy that I had met in the Czech class, his name was Cody, he also had a girlfriend, and he came back, and she asked him to move in together, and he broke up with her. But I wasn't ready to take such a drastic step with my boyfriend. After all, we had been dating for four years. So I tried to make it work. We went to salsa classes. We watched football every week because he loved football. And we hung out every single weekend. And something wasn't clicking. So I thought long and hard to myself and I said, all right, I'm going to ask him a really important question next time I see him. And we're alone. The next time that I saw him and that we were alone happened to be the Super Bowl. I am a die-hard New York sports fan. So this Super Bowl was the Patriots, who I detest, versus some other team that I don't remember. I only remember that it was the Patriots, because one, I hate the Patriots, and two, my boyfriend was a really big Patriots fan. <laughs> so we're watching the football, and unlike most games, the Patriots were losing in the first half. 
And he's getting really upset. And I'm going, all right, I can't ask him this question now. It'd be like kicking a dog while he's down. And then he's in a terrible mood. And I remember that halftime show was the only time in my entire life that I remember actually rooting for the Patriots to win. So third quarter comes, Patriots score a touchdown. Fourth quarter comes, another touchdown. Oh my gosh, they won. Babe, I gotta ask you a question. What do you think about an open relationship? <laughs> this was a man that said, don't wear that dress when I'm not around. Why would you want to own a crop top? I was pretty sure what his answer was going to be. No. But to my surprise, he said, yes, I've been wanting to do that forever. I was like, excuse me, what? My second question was, who do you want to date? And he immediately listed like eight or nine girls that I knew, that I was friends with, that I had met. And I'm just like blown away. I'm like, all right, wait a second. I did not expect this. When I said open relationship, I thought it was going to be like, you were going to be like, nah, and I was going to go have well, fun. And it, nope, oh my gosh. So we talked about it. And I said, we should only date strangers because I don't want to run into girls that you've made out with at your birthday party or around campus. And he said, no, 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 I'd rather date friends. In fact, I'd be more comfortable if you made out with your best friend, Kobe, than with a stranger at the club. All right, well, <laughs> at the time, Cody was single and he had been giving me vibes. He had been, you know, complimenting my outfits, taking me for ice creams. We had been bonding a lot. We had been sharing our deepest, darkest secrets at night with each other, talking on the phone. I told him about my past history with sexual abuse. He told me about his depression and we really bonded. So after my boyfriend said I'd rather you make out with Cody, I was like, not a bad idea. <laughs> so I put on my hottest outfit. I put on my tight, skinny black jeans, a really low cut shirt, bright red lipstick. And I walked up directly to Cody and I said, hey, do you like me? He said no. <laughs> a little awkward for me, but I later learned that that was a flat out lie because one week later, one thing led to the next and we made out. So he was totally lying. And the next day I went to my boyfriend and said, hey, you remember how you told me that I should probably make out with Cody? Well, I did it. He was not happy. <laughs> I was really flabbergasted, but I mean, he was really not happy. It was kind of scary how upset he was. I went over his place and we fought for 12 hours. At the end of the 12 hours, he told me, all right, that's it. You have a choice to make. It's either me or him. This was my boyfriend of four years, who my parents loved who had gone through so much with me in college and high school, and my best friend, somebody who made me laugh every time he tried to dance because his dance moves are kind of like that, <laughs> and somebody who I could always rely on to pick up the phone when I was upset. How could I make a choice like that? So I told him, all right, I need to think about this. It, give me a week. I have a Spanish test coming up that's way more important than either of you boys. So I need to think about this. And at the same time, I went to Cody and I said, hey, my boyfriend's not really happy. He told me I had a choice to make, but I want to clarify something. Last week, before we made out, you said you didn't like me. What's the deal with that? And he said, well, I lied, obviously because the feelings that I have for you are not really like a let's see where this goes or casual. They're like a I want to make you eggs in the morning kind of feelings. And I know you already have a boyfriend, so you're probably looking for something more casual. That was a lot to think about coming from my best friend. So I couldn't make up my mind. And I went to my friend Pooja, who was a business major at NYU. And she said, have you ever heard of the fallacy of failing businesses? I hadn't, I was a journalism major. 
And basically the fallacy of failing businesses goes like this. Sometimes a business starts to fail, so you put in more time and more money to try to make it succeed again. And then it keeps failing and you put in more time and more money. And eventually the business does fail, but you don't realize and you put in all of this time and money just for a business that was gonna fail anyway. And as soon as she said that, I knew exactly what she was talking about. See, my boyfriend was kind of like Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've all been to Blockbuster, love Blockbuster. But it's a brick and mortar store that didn't really keep up with the times, doesn't really adapt, doesn't really change. And Cody was more like Netflix. <laughs> Who doesn't love Netflix? He was adaptive, she was new, and he just fit my needs at the time. Plus, you know, Netflix and chill, that was something that we were definitely doing. Um, so I broke up with my boyfriend, but I didn't get together with Cody. I was newly single, I had been in a relationship for four years, and I was about to graduate college. Probably not a good idea to get into another relationship, especially not one that would be so emotionally intense. So we said, okay, me and Cody, we're just gonna be friends. Mm -hmm. That didn't last. That quickly turned into, we're gonna be just friends and occasional lovers. And then it turned into, we're gonna be just friends and frequent lovers. And then pretty soon I was over his house all the time and I noticed that this kid would put his leftovers into solo cups. And every time he wanted a drink of water, he would take it out of a shop glass because he didn't own any Tupperware or dishware. And I noticed that his toothbrush was really old and gross and definitely looked like it was more than a year old. So I bought him Tupperware, but I said, you're gonna have to buy your own toothbrush. I don't know what you like. Um, and we turned into friends and frequent lovers and sort of domestic partners, but nothing was official yet. A couple weeks later, I had to go out for a friend's birthday and I knew we were gonna be on, going out dancing. So I just checked in with Cody and I said, hey, I'm going out dancing. I don't really know what we are, but I'm probably gonna dance with other guys. I don't think we're official, are we? He said, no, it's fine. Go dance with other guys. Totally cool with it. Another lie. The day that I was supposed to go out dancing, he texts me and goes, actually, can we meet up at sunset on top of a really beautiful building in Manhattan? I'm like, okay. I see where this is going. So we go and he's talking to me. He says, hey, so you know how I had to buy that new toothbrush? And I go, yeah. And he reaches into his bag and he pulls out two toothbrushes. He goes, this one's for you. And this was his way of saying, I want you in my life. I want to create a space in my home for you. I want you to be my partner. Let's make this official. Mm. Of course, I said, yes, how could you not? And we've been dating ever since, and it was going really swimmingly. We went to Iceland. He helped me when I broke my leg. He helped me when my mom had cancer. We did lots of Netflix and show, and we had lots of fun. But then three months ago, I was presented with another similar situation that I had during my sophomore year of college. I got offered a job to work as a bioscience reporter at the Arizona Republic. If that sounds intimidating to you, bioscience reporter, it was intimidating to me too. So I didn't really know whether or not I should take it. It was across the country. I knew nobody in Arizona. But I didn't ask my boyfriend whether or not I could do it. I went to him and I said, hey, I got this job offer. It sounds cool, but I don't know if I can do it. What do you think? And he goes, of course you can do this. You will learn so much from this and I will support you in any way that I can. He drove me across the country. We battled snowstorms in Colorado. He drove for 13 hours at a time sometimes just to get me here. He dropped me off at my first day of work and I was so nervous and he said, don't worry, babe, you got this. 
And now I'm planning to see him this weekend. We're still long distance. We probably will be long distance for quite a while. I don't know where we're both going, but I know we're going together. And so tomorrow I will pack my bags to take a flight to New York. And the one thing that I know I do not have to pack is a toothbrush. <laughs>